An empire is established when intelligent robots proliferate towards the stars to help humanity expand its influence beyond our galaxy. Before humanity gets there, India must understand the power of robotics with the current geopolitical reality. Global corporations and every state are in a race to control the upstream, the midstream and the downstream of robotics. You guessed it right China, US, Europe and Japan dominate the robot narratives. The commodities that make up a robot belong to a whole host of nations which India has to function with. This is the reason why robots are still expensive. The question is, will India have a Tata Nano moment to make its industries access robots at the cheapest cost? The good news is that India's large-scale manufacturing units have embraced robots at scale, but they are not Indian-made robots. The lack of Indianization of the robots means that the small-scale manufacturing sector or the support sector for large manufacturing will not have access to affordable robots, costing $30,000 or less. The data shows it all. The density of robots in India is 4 robots per 10,000 people, while India's neighbors, China, have 400 robots per 10,000 people. Now that I have established some context, let's look at the raw material cost and the technology cost that makes a robot. The raw materials used eventually become actuators, sensors, end-of-arm tooling and controllers. These are the bare bones and muscles that make a robot. Actuators are made up of rare earths like neodymium, dysprosium and praseodymium, which are abundant in China. These actuators make up 15% of the total cost of an industrial robot or cobot. Not all is lost in the upstream. India has some control in making structural components for a robot. These include aluminum, steel, titanium and shape memory alloys, such as nickel tin for specialized actuators. India can also manage to gather chromium and manganese, which are used to strengthen steel alloys for gears and frames. Now that I have established a case in the upstream, let us move to the midstream, which makes up another 30% of the cost of the robot. India has no control whatsoever over the midstream commodity that makes up the sensors, which have metal components and semiconductors. Common materials include aluminum, silicon, copper and rare metals such as rhodium, cobalt and sometimes uranium blends for specialized sensing elements. The upstream and midstream commodity is in control of countries like China, Russia, DRC, South Africa, US, Peru, Chile, Australia. The sensors market is dominated by China, Taiwan, Japan, US and Europe. India cannot compete with these nations but has to constantly negotiate trade treaties to import materials, parts or finished products. So what is India's game? To truly stay on top, India must focus on the layer of intelligence, which is the downstream of robotics, which also accounts for 50% of the cost of the robot. This is the only way India can redefine its robot ecosystem and bring the costs down for Indian users. To do so, the Indian government, its academia and the corporations have to play on the strengths of the analytical capabilities of its workforce. India can train robots to not just perform menial tasks, but also deliver high-end precision work using large language models and computer vision. Yes, the Indian state has a plan to support AI in its draft national policy in robotics. The draft policy admits that India does not have the capabilities to dominate the upstream and midstream of the robotics game. Therefore, the policy places high value on the downstream of knowledge, which is to train intelligent machines and robots. The challenge of bringing the cost of an industrial scale robot down to under $30,000 is going to remain if we don't focus on the knowledge stream in the robot ecosystem. It has to control the intelligence layer. At the moment, the Indian ecosystem is fragmented and all over the place. There is high-end robotics work done at IIT Delhi, IISC in Bengaluru and DRDO along with some private players or startups. This is not enough. The funding to indigenize robots is still very much under $80 million over the last 10 years. It's a dismal show of support from the private purse if India harbors any robot dreams. At least it must speed up on the intelligence layer to build the vision language action models that drive intelligence in robots. Our engineers can work on multimodal input, vision, text with real-time processing for robot applications. Our engineers can also enable powerful GPUs and architectures with tensor cores and very large-scale integrations. However, as I have always mentioned, in order to power LLMs for robotics, you need massive clean energy transitions. India's thinking needs to become cohesive in the robot race. To lead the geopolitics, it has to embrace robot technology or suffer the consequence of the geopolitical hegemony of China or the US. 